Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. About a month ago, I did a video on OpenPleb. OpenPleb is an initiative started by Steve of Gamers Nexus and Wendell of Level One Techs. And the goal of the initiative is to create a sort of nonprofit company and work with consumer hardware manufacturers uh, to open up on their protocols, hardware interfaces, that sort of thing. So Steve commented on my video uh, and also reposted my tweet. And one of the things he said is that there are already a few manufacturers in interested uh, behind the scenes that he hadn't revealed yet. But also about uh, maybe a, within a day or so of the tweet going out and my video going up, uh, I got the I saw this tweet from Height, which if you haven't heard of Height before, they're a manufacturer of PC cases, case accessories, and now they're uh, also getting into the peripheral market. So they commented out on Twitter, uh, at Height, the software user experience is our key value proposition. We appreciate and support the direction of OpenPleb. We're eager to learn more about how we can contribute and be part of this at Gamers Nexus, at Level One Tax, at Calc Programmer One. Universal hardware, hashtag OpenPleb, hashtag OpenRGB. So this was pretty cool. Uh, this was like the first vendor that's gone public about supporting the OpenPleb initiative. And so I commented, I replied to their tweet and said, you know, if you provide documentation for your RGB stuff, that would be amazing. I like the look of the height cases. I've seen the Gamers Nexus reviews and would love to use them for my next build, especially if it comes with open specification RGB controllers. So the next thing they said is they would be happy to provide with documentation as well as samples of our Canvas desk mat and Y60 case. DM for so that we can arrange, which I did. It took a few weeks, but I got back an email and we went back and forth and so, um, what came in the mail today was this pile of stuff right here. So, this is the Canvas RGB mouse mat and the Y60 case. Now, unfortunately, the Y60 case does not contain any integrated RGB controllers. So, we can't add that to OpenRGB in its current state, although if height does get into the RGB controller or uh, RGP like case fans, fan controller in that market, or make a case with integrated RGB lighting with a, like a USB based controller, I would love to get that added to open RGB as well. But um, what they did send was the canvas and the canvas is a pretty cool new desk mat. And so I've already got it set up right here. And we can turn the camera back to manual exposure so you can actually see the lights. And so what we have is it's a full-size desk mat. It's got, I think they said, 50 different individual lighting zones. And it is flexible. So unlike some, uh, well, like the Razer Firefly, is a hard mat and the Razer Goliathus extended chroma is the mat that I was using before and it was a soft flexible mat but it only had a single lighting zone all the way around and that's because in the little hub control box where the cord went in it was just two LEDs that shone out either end into a light pipe that was around the edge of the mouse mat so really the only LEDs were up in this little box that was up in the top corner. But this one is different because this one actually somehow gets the LED strip all the way throughout so that you get a nice, bright, even lighting through the whole mat with ARGB control of every uh, each of the 50 zones around the entire mat. And that's pretty cool. So I got it all hooked up. But now the interesting part is what OpenPleb is actually pushing for, and that is the documentation. So this is what they emailed me, the Height Canvas Protocol Document version 1.0. And in this document, they sent um, the hardware revision, 
So it looks like there are two different revisions of this hardware. Uh, they have two different vendor IDs and product IDs, uh, 3402 for VID and OBOO and OBO1 for PID. So we can do LS USB and we can find in this list of devices right here, height, QRGB canvas, 3402, OB01. So that is our device. Now it says we are using USB serial port. So we can do ls dev grep tty and look for either tty USB or tty ACM. And so we have a tty ACM. The other thing we can try to do real quick is I'll put the camera back on here. I'm gonna unplug this. And the one thing I do not do like about this uh, mouse mat is the cord on this one is detachable. It's just a USB type C. Whereas on the Razer I had before, the cord was just attached. And so moving the mat around felt like you would constantly be worried about breaking the cord because the mat's so big and floppy. And then this cord just dangling off it with no strain relief. Whereas this ID, this idea is a lot better. We can just plug in the cable here. So I'm going to, the reason I'm unplugging and plugging it back in is so one, you can see that it does a little startup animation whenever you plug it in. This is explained more in the document. But also to reset the USB connection. So let's go back to the screen and do sudo dmessage and we get um, this right here. So this is where we connected it. No, that's where we disconnected it. This is where we connected it. New USB device, uh, USB device found, OB01, or 3402 OB01. And then it says product is the canvas. And then it says here, it's loaded the CDC ACM module, and it said TTY ACM0, AC, or USB ACM device. This is a USB serial port, essentially. Um, Arduinos also use uh, TTY ACM on Linux. So we can try to do some things. So first of all, um, it says, well, let's ignore the um, get the firmware version for now. Um, let's start with trying to turn on and off the animation because I don't want to worry about reads. It's easier to just play around with writes on a console like this. So let's just try this one. Turn on and off firmware animation. So right now the mouse mat is animating. So as you can see, that's doing like a rainbow wave across the whole uh, mat. And that's just continuously going. That's like it's built in effect. So it says we can turn that off. So let's do echo dash N E and then open quotes with just the single quotes backslash X. Now that lets us do hex numbers and echo them out to a port. So let's start with, um, it wants us to do FFDC, and then this, we should center these so we can actually read them. So FFDC 05, and then we need to add either zero or one for whether we want the firmware animation off or on. So let's start with FF, and then DC, and then 05, and then 00. So, and we'll put that to TTY ACM0. Now, when I run that, the goal is that the mouse mat should stop animating. So, I'll switch back to the camera. Uh, we'll put that away. And so, right now, it's still animating. Oops, I just tapped the button. Um, and yes. It stopped. If we change that last byte from 00 to 01, I'll go ahead and show that. 
this was 00, we're going to change it to 01 and go back to the camera. So right now it's there's no animation. Uh, it's all just kind of blue. That's where it stopped. We'll hit one and you can see it's animating again. So we can toggle that animation on and off just by running that command. So once it's off, we can do some other stuff. So let's go back to the screen. And the next thing is our streaming command. And in OpenRGB, we call this direct mode. Um, I didn't want to reformat the document there. So streaming command is what we call direct mode, which is where software can just directly write to the LEDs. And here is the layout of the LEDs. It starts at 1, goes to 20 on the top. The side is 5, then 20 more going back, and then 5 more. Uh, so that's starting at 1, going all the way down to 20, 21 to 25, 26, all the way up to 45 over here, and finally 46 up to 50 over here. So that's our 50 LEDs in a loop around the mat. So now we need to create this packet. So it's FF E E O two O one. And then it says the LED count, which is looks like two bytes. Uh, three two hex is fifty decimal. So that's saying we're gonna write fifty bytes and it looks like these are both marked as LED count so it must be least significant or yeah, the least significant byte is the second one and the most significant byte is the first one if this is really a 16-bit value so uh oh and then three two and then it says byte six is just zero and then finally it's giving us our saying from byte 7 to byte 156 is the RGB byte. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and let's go ahead and nano um, height.sh and we're going to paste this into a script here and that way we can copy paste. So let's do um, Let's try setting it all to red. So red would be FF0000 repeated 50 times. So FF O O or O O. So oops. that is red. So let's delete that out. And now we can go, uh, what is our paste? Control Shift V. So. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. If we did that right, that's a full packet of all red. And we're going to write that to dev pty acm0. Now we're going to do sh height.sh. If this works, the whole mouse mat turns red. So, ready, set. Um, that's green. That's not red. Um, okay. It is possible that they messed up on their documentation and they just got the byte order wrong. And realistically, that's not that big of a deal. Um, it could be GRB instead of RGB. And I mean, let's try it. Let's go back to height.sh or not run it again. We're going to edit it. Um, let's. Go ahead and so we have FF so 
So I did 00 FF 00 00 FF 00. So now I should change the first two LEDs from green to red if it really is GRB color order. Uh, yeah. So we're going to look up here in this corner. Right now it is green. Uh, is that showing up on the camera? Yes, it is. OK. So it's green. When we run this, I expect the first two LEDs turn red. Um, OK. Well, there's a section over here that turned yellow. But green and red make yellow. And it is possible that the LEDs are so close together in there that they are sort of the green blending with the red, blending with the green to create yellow. Um, so, okay. Let's go back and just start this over again. So let's do echo. Uh, Okay, that is all of our bytes. Now we're going to cut that one out. And let's do... Um, o -O -F -F -O -O. So if it is GRB color order, that's green, red, blue. Then this is now red. So FFOOOO would be green. OOFFOO is red and OOFF is blue. So if we assume this is the color order, then let's do the same thing. Control Shift V. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 8, 9, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 41, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50. TTYACM0. And we'll try that again. So back to the camera. If this works, it will be red this time, the whole thing. So let's see. Red. Okay. So that's not too bad. That just means it's GRB rather than RGB. And they got their color order a little bit wrong in the documentation. Um, okay, that's not a big deal. The packet structure is at least there. And just to confirm, let's do the same thing, but with blue. And then we'll do, uh-oh, oh, oh FF, that's blue. And we'll copy that. And actually, we'll just leave the first line there for now. Oops. Oh, we've got a space or a new line in with our. We want the backslash. We want that. Copy. Okay. Now we can just go out to the same length as the previous line. That would have been the easy thing to do. Um. Oh, uh, nano doesn't scroll all the lines. Okay. Um, so that's not the easy thing to do. So let's do that again. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we need to get rid of that line. And if this goes right, we get blue. So let's see. And blue. So there you have it. The documentation for this particular device is pretty simple. The protocol is pretty limited, but we can do enough that we can write an OpenRGB controller that would be pretty useful. So we can get the firmware version to display on the screen in the information tab. 
Uh, I haven't tried to do the read and write yet because um, I've just been playing around with the console of echoing things out to the port, but that shouldn't be too hard. We can turn the firmware animation on and off, which we could make into a mode. So we could have direct for streaming mode and then rainbow or rainbow wave for the firmware animation mode, which it seems like that's the only mode that this thing actually supports. Then there's the turn on and off the startup animation, which is the thing I showed you earlier when I plugged it back in. It does this like faster pattern when it first turns on before it settles down. Uh, you can turn that on and off. I'm not sure if that's something we're going to implement in OpenRGB or not. Uh, you can also choose whether to have the effect, the firmware effect on or off when the PC is off. Um, I'll probably want that set to off. That also is something that we don't actually have like a support for in the RGB controller API, but we could maybe make like a config file, like special setting for this uh, in the openrgb.json settings file um, that would load during startup. Um, and that one is another write packet, FFDC 0700 or 01 and then 00 or 01 for uh, whether to turn the startup animation on or off, and then the PC on or off. Uh, then we can get that preference. So this startup animation on off, PC on off, you can actually retrieve that from the device with this FFDC08 request, uh, and then read back this value. Um, and then the streaming command. So that's really all of this, all the protocol is for this device. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, but huge props to height because having this documentation, even if it is a very simple protocol, um, just I've already known how to control the thing just from a few minutes of playing around and looking at this document and no reverse engineering was required, no Wireshark was needed. And since this is a, a USB serial device, it's actually a little harder to capture USB serial with Wireshark compared to like USB HID. And this document just made that entirely unnecessary. So that's awesome. And thank you Height for sending me this stuff. And the next thing is I will try to write an open RGB controller for it. So yeah, thanks for watching.